Hey, Code Creatives, welcome to this video all about using Google more effectively for your searches. As developers, we're Googling for things every single day. And these are things like syntax and errors and documentation, algorithms, tutorials, and so on. So considering that we spend so much of our time Googling, I'm going to show you in this video how we can Google more effectively, save time, and get better search results. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to point out is that Google searches are case insensitive. So let's take a look at that. Here you can see on my screen that I have two tabs open on the left side and the right side, and they're both at google.com. And this is so that we can do comparisons between our searches. So first of all, let's say that we wanted to search for React hooks. Well, we could do it lowercase like this, and let's search. Or we can do the R as uppercase like this. And if you look at both the left and the right side, you can see that we have the same results, right? Introducing hooks react, introducing hooks react, hooks at a glance react, and so on. Let's scroll down a little bit. And on the right side. So our first thing to know is that Google searches are case insensitive. Another thing to be aware of is that word order matters. So for example, let's say that we search for JavaScript code editor. And here are our results. Then in this window, let's search for code editor JavaScript. So we're just putting JavaScript at the end here. And now check it out, we have different results. We have the six best JavaScript editor choices here. And here we're getting JS Fiddle, playcode.io, so in this case, it might not necessarily be that these results are better for you, but just be aware that if you do change the word order, you could end up with different results. So this might be something that you want to play around with if you're not getting the results that you're looking for. Oh, snap. Now let's move on and discuss some of the search operators that we can use. The first one we'll look at is called the wildcard operator. And for this one, we use the asterisk. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. For example, let's say that we wanted to do a comparison between the Vue.js framework and some other framework. And we weren't sure which framework that we wanted to compare it to. Maybe we kind of just want to see what other frameworks are out there or which other frameworks might be comparable to Vue.js. So instead of searching for, let's say, Vue.js versus React, what we can do is we can say Vue.js verse, and we can put the asterisk here, and let's search. And now if we look at the search results, well, the first one is Vue versus React, but then the second one, we get Vue versus Angular. And then if we go down, see some more Vue versus React, and then here's Vue versus Gatsby, React versus Vue, Alpine JS versus Vue, Vue versus Gatsby. So using this wildcard helps us to do more of a general search where we might have an idea of what we're looking for, but we don't know exactly what we're looking for. But what if we do know exactly what we're looking for? Not only do we know what we're looking for, but we know the exact phrase or the exact grouping of words that we want to find. Well, that's where this next concept comes into play. And this one is often referred to as the exact match or the literal match. So for this one, what we're going to use is quotations around the words or group of words that we want to find that exact match for. So you remember the example we had earlier where we had JavaScript code editor. Well, what if we did the same search, but this time we wrapped those three words in quotes or quotation marks? And let's do our search. And let's see the difference between this and this. So here where we're not using the quotes, what Google is finding is it's finding results that have these words or maybe some pairing of these words. Like here we see code editor and here we see JavaScript, but we don't necessarily see them all grouped together as one. However, here, because we use the quotation marks, we're finding things like JavaScript code editor here in the page snippet, or here sometimes in the title, JavaScript code editor or code editors. Here we see it in the snippet. Again, here in the snippet. And this snippet is coming from the page description or sometimes the content of the page. And you can see often that Google will do this keyword bolding here too, depending on our query. So that's the difference between using quotation marks or not using quotation marks. We use quotation marks when we want to find that exact ordering or grouping of words. 
The next operators we'll look at are the AND and the OR operators. And if you're familiar with JavaScript, then you're probably already familiar with the logical AND and logical OR operators. And these basically work the same way here. So normally with Google, if we do a search, let's say that we search for React TypeScript. Well, when we do this search, Google is basically going to put an AND between these words. So let's search. And we can see here that Google is finding us results that have both TypeScript and React, some kind of combination, maybe in the title or the description snippet. Here we have TypeScript, and then we see React here in the title, how to use TypeScript with React, React and TypeScript cheat sheets, React with TypeScript. So you can see these are things all about React and TypeScript. Now, what we can do is we can do a search for React or TypeScript, and we do the OR in capital letters like that. And let's see the difference. So now if we do our search here, we can see that we're getting results for React or TypeScript, not combinations of these. So we're finding here React, TypeScript. This is TypeScript. TypeScript again, React, TypeScript, NPM. So there are a few things in here with both TypeScript and React, as you can see. However, the main entries that it's finding are things like reactjs.org, typescriptlang.org. So these are search results that really have to do with one or the other. Let's look at another operator that we can use. And this one is going to be the minus symbol. And this one we're going to use when we want to exclude certain words from our search. So if we look at the example we had before, where we did React TypeScript, we look down here, we can see that we found React plus TypeScript cheat sheets. And then down here again, we found React TypeScript cheat sheets. So let's say that we did that same search, React TypeScript. We'll do it over here this time on the right. But we want to make sure that we don't get any results about cheat sheets. So we can do minus cheat sheet. And now let's look at our results. And here you can see that we've just got results about React and TypeScript and we don't have those cheat sheet results that we had here. Maybe another example we can look at is, let's say that we were searching for JavaScript frameworks. So let's do our search here on the left, JavaScript frameworks. And right up here, we can see that we're getting view. So let's say that we wanted to do the same search, but we wanted to make sure we didn't see anything about view. So we could do JavaScript frameworks, and then we can do our minus view. And here we can see in our results, we're getting Angular, JS, Backbone, Ember. We've got Angular over here, Angular, Ember, React, Backbone, but we don't see anything about Vue. So that's one way that we can use an operator to get more specific about the certs that we're looking for. Now this next one is really cool. This one is gonna allow us to search within a particular site. So for example, let's say that we wanted to search for JavaScript arrays, but we only wanted to find results that came from MDN web docs. Well, if we did the normal search, let's say JavaScript array, we can see that the first result does come from the MDN web docs, which is at developer.mozilla.org. But then we get some other results from W3Schools, javascripttutorial.net, JavaScript info, and so on. What I want to do, though, is I want to limit my results only to those found on the MDN WebDocs site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here on the right, and I'm going to do site, colon, and then I'm going to put the site's domain, which is developer.mozilla.org. And then I'm going to do JavaScript array and search. And now here we can see the difference. We can see that we're getting all entries from developer.mozilla.org, which is the MDN web docs. And we're finding all sorts of things about JavaScript arrays here. Prototype.find, array.from, prototype.push, .map, .filter, and so on. So now certain sites we could come to and we could use the search from within the site. Like we could go to MDN web docs and use their search. But this way is going to allow us to use Google search to search within the site. Now let's say that we like the results that we're getting from a certain site, but we also want to find other sites that are similar to it. So for example, Stack Overflow is a site that a lot of developers use. What if we wanted to find other resources similar to Stack Overflow? 
Well, what we can do is we can do this. We can say related followed by a colon, and then we can do stack overflow.com. And now we can see we're getting github.com, codeacademy.com, sitepoint.com, jsfiddle.net, jQueryUI.com, w3schools.com. So these are other sites that we might use to do further research on web development and JavaScript, for example. Now let's move on and let's talk about something called file type. What this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to download a resource, let's say a PDF or a Microsoft Office document, for example. So as an example, let's come here and let's say that we want to find PDFs having to do with React hooks. So I can do file type colon PDF and then I can say React hooks. And we can see here that we're getting PDFs. You can see here a PDF. We're getting a cheat sheet. React hooks in action. This is a PDF here. React hooks a guided tour, another PDF. So if I clicked on one of these, for example, you can see I'm getting the React hooks guided tour PDF and I can view it or I can download it. So this is a nice way when we want to find certain types of resources like PDFs or Word docs. Now here's a very useful one, filtering the results by date. So as developers, we often want the freshest, most current information. Like if I'm searching for Vue.js, let's try this. If I do Vue.js and I only want to find the most recent results, maybe I can do something like after, let's say 2020. Well, now we can see here, we got August 9th, 2021. We've got some of these video results. These are all in 2021. This one is from four weeks ago. Alternately, let's say that we wanted to get more legacy results, like we wanted to see older information about Vue. Well, instead of doing after, we can just swap that for before. And now we'll see older entries, older information about Vue.js. Let's see if we can see some of this. Here we can see something about develop with Vue.js 2, which is an older version of Vue. We can see this entry here from 2019. So these are all ways to tailor and get more specific in our searches. Now, of course, there's another way that we can do this. And Google gives us this tools here, and then this dropdown that says anytime. So let's go ahead and try it out. If we click on the dropdown, we can see there's various options, past hour, past week, past month, past year, but we can also do a custom range. So let's click on that. Now let's say we want to narrow our search down to August 1st, 2021 to September 1st of 2021. That's a pretty narrow range. Let's click go, and we'll have to get rid of this before. And now let's search again. And here we can see August 9th, 2021, August 27th, August 2nd, August 26th. So those are two ways to narrow your search down by date. So the next thing I want to show you is something that's similar to date that we just saw, but this has to do with just searching for numbers within a specific range. So one way this could be useful, let's say that we were searching for Angular, and actually we wanted to search just for older versions of Angular, like versions 4 to 6 for whatever reason. Well, we could do it like this. We could come in here and we could say Angular, and then we would do the number 4, and then these two dots. That's the key thing here to search within a number range. So four dot dot six. Let's search. And now if we look down at some of the search results, we can see that we're getting things about Angular 4. Here's something Angular 4. What's new in Angular 5? How much time would it take to learn Angular 4? And so on. So in this way, we were really able to narrow our search down and get very specific, that we just wanted things having to do with Angular 4 to 6. So in this video, we looked at a whole bunch of ways that we can get more detailed, more specific with our Google searches, how we can become more efficient and to target what we're looking for in a much more direct way. And my suggestion for you going forward is to take some of these operators and techniques and try them out. Open up a couple of different browser windows and compare the different search results that you get. Also, the next time that you do a search, take a moment before you do the search and think about some of the operators and things that you learned today and see if you can incorporate them or use them in the search that you're about to do. I'm also curious to know about maybe some of the things that you found to be effective in doing Google searches. 
I'd love to hear about them in the comments down below. So please do go ahead and leave them in the comments. And if you feel like you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like and consider subscribing to the channel and I'll be bringing you a lot more content. See you next time.